Hey guys, thanks for watching the videos again. Um, I know it's been a while since I've updated one, and the last couple that I updated was actually working on vehicles. The reason for that is I was working for uh, my previous employer. We had a government contract working on heavy equipment, um, installing autonomous grade control, but it was all on military basis, so I could not film the day to day operations there. Um, military would not allow it, and rightfully so. So what you see me on today is a 3412 that's got fuel and oil. Uh, they discovered this through their oil samples that they do when they service these engines. This one is actually on a 6,000 horsepower tractor tug. It, these big engines are pretty impressive. They are EMDs, not CATs. But CAT does have their own. There's some 3516s, 3512s that I'll be making videos on because I work on those often. So this one here, I'm just I'm opening up the, the valve covers. So it's an old mechanical engine, so it's got... Um, Metal fuel lines under the valve covers. So I can visually inspect it before I introduce some dye into the system. Uh, I wish something would have jumped out at me on this one, but uh, as you'll see throughout the video, uh, there was nothing real obvious. Um, so here I'm checking to make sure the lines are all tight. That's, that's your rocker arms or uh, valves, whatnot. Where all the magic happens is run your injectors off of those as well. Right there's a glimpse of the 3,000 horsepower. Later in this video, if you'll stick around and watch, you'll be able to hear that one start. And we also start this one up with it, with it running off a five gallon bucket of diesel um, with the valve covers off, just so I can circulate the die. Here I am. I'm just just still getting my valve covers off, checking the rocker arms, and uh, you see me wiping sweat from my brow. Let me let me express to you guys, man. Summer in Texas is hot, especially on the Gulf Coast, and you throw these 6,000 horsepower engines in the mix, plus these two 3412s. There's a second one. These are actually firefighting uh, apparatuses. That's a centrifugal pump that you see on the backside. So we're not able to start them up while we're at port. You'll see once we fire up the, uh, the big EMD, that's when we, we've got to go out to the middle of the channel. So as soon as these 3412s fire up, they're, they're spraying water. A lot of these boats are under contract to help with these chemical plants, um, refineries, other ships, whatnot. This one wasn't actually on contract for, for a firefighting vessel, but it's, it's equipped to help out just in case, and I'm sure they would in case of emergency. Um, so I'm really trying just to, to get everything off these engines so we can uh, introduce the dye to the system. So bear with me as, as I get these off and uh, we'll see what we do. So now that I got the valve covers off, I'm going to start prepping the diesel, um, mix the dye into the five gallon bucket, get it ready to, to run. And you'll see me here in just a second. I'll go to the other side of the engine. We're going to disconnect from the, um, the, I guess the primary filter is what you would call it. They, they run some ray cores. Prior to the uh, fuel hitting the engines, there's the dye that I use. There's the bucket. I just poured all of it in there. I've got two bottles. There's a better look at your uh, the PP, that's what they call it. So I'm coming over here, kind of getting set up so you guys can see what I'm going to do. Um, just kind of touch base with my the history. I mean, man, I've got, I would say, about 20 years hands on experience with these big four diesels. That's really what I enjoy working on. Um, to be honest with you, these old mechanical engines are, are what I like. The newer, electronic ones are they're not bad but you know it's nothing like diagnosing a diesel by listening to it then the feeling you get once you you are able to fix these old mechanical guys without the, the computer telling you what where to go or what to do some of these newer guys they, they get a little lost they gotta have that cat et um, i try not to break it out until i have to but you see me there with my best best tool i got my old trusty pocket knife they had some foil on the, on the lines that I had to get out of the way because they had just painted this engine. So I'm using my metric uh, speed wrench there. You can see I do have the right size wrenches. But one thing to consider, too, you've got to carry every tool you need on this boat. So we work out of bags. I've got a backpack, and then i got a little little handheld bag that I, that I try to carry everything in. I've got, you know, I've got a set of wrenches, but, but those things add weight. So if I don't think I need them, I usually don't even bring them down there. and Crescent will get the job done. So once I get these lines off, uh, I'll just set them down into the bottom of the bucket, and then you see my hand pump right there. I'll just prime it up a little bit, and then I'm going to visually check it with a black light and see if anything jumps out at me, if I can get so lucky, but uh, as you'll see, I won't. Uh, the boat what, did not know this, but I'm, I'm thinking that these uh, 
port engineers, they um, they order the motor oil with dye in it. A lot of this is stored in bulk tank on these uh, these vessels. So I'm assuming they've already got dye in the oil, for just in case their tank starts leaking or they start losing oil to where they can they can help track it down pretty quick with the same method I'm using trying to find the fuel. Um, the dye that I got it should glow red or orange. Um, but you'll see later in the video. I didn't really see any visual leaks, so. I'm thinking we, we got some seals and maybe some injectors leak in or a very, very small leak. I think it was like a 6% uh, dilution is, is what they were told. I didn't get to see the oil sample, neither did my boss. Uh, we are going to pull our own sap samples and send them to the CAT uh, SOS factory to get it back so we can see what's going on with it. As of right now, unless these guys just want to send, spend money and replace parts, I really don't didn't find much to, uh, to fix up this thing. So I didn't want to start throwing parts at it. Um, so yeah, we kind of did a good visual inspection on this thing. I really didn't find a, a smoking gun that I was hoping to find on this. Uh, you see me walking around. I just set the bucket of diesel down. Uh, not sure what, what the heck, where I went there, but uh, I'll get back to you here in just a second once we get back at it. So I had to run across, grab my little 3 8 impact. There's a um, a clamp right there on the fuel filter housing that I had to take loose so I could get enough uh, slack in the lines to run it out of the bucket. So I'm going to get that pulled off of there so I can get the lines down in the bucket, make sure I can get, the, get it to catch prime like it needs to. You'll see me prime the engine up here in just a second. Uh, I'll just pump it up. Um, I'm going to go grab the black light and just kind of visually see if I see anything uh, that jumped out right away, which of course, no one going to because really I got to run this engine so I can get that dye to circulate into the fuel system. Um, but yeah, so basically what, what I'm trying to accomplish is this dye, if, once it's uh, introduced into the diesel, it's circulating through the system. It, if there's a leak inside the valve cover, it should glow red. Um, like I said, the oil it glows, and it, it was already glowing yellow, uh, so that that made a made a bit of an issue. I didn't like having already some UV uh, dye underneath the valve cover when I'm trying to introduce some more. So I didn't know what I was going to see if I was going to see red or purple or, or whatnot. But at the end, all I wound up seeing was green, and it was doing that before I even introduced the dye. Um, so like I spoke before, I didn't really find any any visual fuel leaks, which is unfortunate because I wish I would have. Um, it really felt like I've done something, but uh, you know, before we went to this job, my boss and I discussed, and uh, really weren't expecting to find much. Um, we think they uh, they might have been a little bit too worried about about their oil sample, these old mechanical engines. You're going to get some dilution. Um, we didn't feel like it was excess of uh, what they were claiming to see, uh, which I know they seen it. They just sent it to a different lab. Cat lab analysis usually comes back a little lower than our customers for whatever reason. So you can see I got a black light flashlight there I'm looking throughout the valve covers. Uh, just trying to see if I can see anything that's red, purple, something besides neon yellow. And neon yellow is all I was seeing. You'll see here in a minute I try to get fancy with my uh, my glasses and light and camera and so you guys can see what I'm seeing. But uh, yeah, so basically just checking it out. Didn't really see anything. Kind of scratching my head this time wondering what the hell. But getting ready to fire this thing up with, off this bucket, I, I knew that uh, just hand priming it wasn't going to really put that much fuel in it, but wanted to make sure it would actually start. As you can see, it glowing already before we even start this engine. So uh, there's the dye and the oil that I was speaking of. I'll, I'll try to make it where you can see a little bit better here in just a second. But, uh, but yeah, uh, stay tuned because we're getting ready to fire this <laughs>
that was a 3,000 horsepower startup. Trust me, the video does not do it justice on how loud it is down there. You see me wearing earplugs before, or my ear must before we even fired that guy up. Um, so you can see the yellow there. I got the, cam the camera stuck behind my glasses. Um, that's all from the oil. We haven't fired this engine up, but we're getting ready to fire it up. Um, you get to hear it start as well and see it run when the valve covers off. There's some more of your uh, 3,000 horsepower EMDs. Uh, it's pretty impressive. Um, those those things that are in locomotives, these ships, they come bigger even. But uh, this is a 16 cylinder. There's two sides of this guy. That's just, just one side there that I'm showing you. Wasn't there to work on them, haven't really worked on them. <laughs> So I had to I had to stop filming there. I had a had part of the boat crew down there with me. Like I told you, when we fired that three thousand horsepower up, that's because we had to leave the dock. We were out in the middle of the channel, and there's little tour boats taking everybody on dolphin tours and whatnot. And we're spraying water all over the harbor, so we really couldn't run it any longer than we needed to. And I was there to do my job, so I had to put the camera down and uh, run that thing out. Once we ran it out for a few minutes, I shut it down. Um, we were getting oil everywhere. Uh, got my black light back out. Um, never seen anything anything besides the, the neon yellow so the red dye never came through on any of the, the top end parts um, so at this point I'm, I'm a little unsure of what to do to this engine like I said I don't want to throw parts on it these guys can throw good money after bad choices but uh there's really no reason spending money on these engines you know I suggest that we run the run it let's see if the dilution gets worse if the dilution gets worse in between the time they service it then we'll address it again. Um, I was supposed to do the other engine, but the other engine uh, actually needed an air starter. But like I said, I had part of the boat crew down there with me then while I was troubleshooting and diagnosing that, so I couldn't capture that. I don't want these customers getting upset when I have the camera down there. All I'm doing is setting it down and, and working and doing my job. It really doesn't distract me or take me any longer, but uh, just out of respect for them, um, I don't want them thinking or getting upset over it. Um, but I'm sure I'll run across a boat cruise one of these days that'll be pretty, pretty receptive of it. Uh, there's a lot of these guys on these tugs that are, are have their own YouTube channels as well. Uh, so here I am. I'm just, I'm just buttoning this thing up, back up, getting ready to call it. There's, there's how I was running off the diesel, fixing to hook the, the fuel lines up. You can see there that the uh, color of the diesel actually changed for the dye. So basically all I'm doing is hooking the fuel lines back up here. I'll prime it up again, make sure she'll start for them when they, when they need it, um, and get off the boat. Uh, like I said, I, I don't think this video does justice on just how hot it is on these boats. Uh, it, it's rewarding work. We get paid well to do it. But guys, it is hot. Um, I'm going to try to get me a, temp, uh, a thermometer so I can get the ambient temperature where you guys can see. I imagine this sometimes north of 150 degrees down here you're in the shell of these boats they have blowers but those blowers uh sometimes they help sometimes they don't mainly they just blow hot air but uh here's my view as i'm leaving the, the harbor um, i didn't capture the boat that i was on out of respect for the customer uh, one of these days i will once we get on a smaller customer this is one of our big large customers so i didn't want to take any chances but uh thanks for watching guys